chances with 12 other guys. Majority wins. 
So if seven or more of us vote yes, we take it into the judge and tell him we're a hung jury. And if seven or more of us vote no, then we are not a hung jury, and we go on discussing it. Well, doesn't seem quite right to me. It's the only solution. He's right. It's the only way. Anything to end this. <laughs> are we agreed then? Yeah. Sure. Seven or more of us vote yes, and we take it to the judge. Okay. Let's everyone call your vote out. I vote yes. We are a hung jury. Yes. Two? No. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Five? No. Six? No. Seven? Yes. Eight? No. Nine? No. Ten? Yes. Eleven? No. Twelve? Yes. Oh, and no. six to six. <laughs> <laughs> Get a majority to decide whether we're a hung jury or not. Look, I voted with the majority on this question, but I didn't really agree with how I voted. Not really. And I still don't. So I'm going to change my vote. I vote no. We are not a hung jury. I still believe the boy is guilty of murder. But there's some things I want to find out from those gentlemen who changed their minds. Then we are not a hung jury, so we go on. Good. Why did you change your mind? Well, look, he makes some good points, and he seems very, very sure about what he's talking about. While this gentleman only gets angry and insults everyone. <laughs> well, does the anger and the insult change the guilt of the boy? He did do it. That just because, are you going to set a murderer loose just because one juror gets angry because he thinks we're going to turn a murderer loose? I don't think so. The trap was straight in front of the window. Let's take that point. The L train would have made a low rumbling noise. Now L trains also screech as they go around curves. So the old man could have heard a scream, which is high pitched. And it is a tenement, and they have very thin walls. Good, good, that's it, that's it. And what if the old man was wrong about the time it took him to get from the bedroom to the front door, but right about whom he saw running downstairs? Now, keep in mind, there are no fingerprints found on the knife, and it is summer, so gloves would seem unlikely. Now, I want you to listen to this man. He's got the goods. <laughs> and it would have taken a second or two to get out a handkerchief and wipe all the fingerprints away. This is a boy. Let's uh, just time this one out to see. J just what are we finding? Right. Yes, let's be exact, please. I'm saying that the old man could have been wrong about the time it took him to get from the bedroom to the front door, but right about whom he saw running downstairs. The murderer could have taken 39 seconds to wipe the fingerprints away and run down the stairs where the old man saw him. The kid, I mean. This is right. We reconstructed the old man getting out of bed and going to the door. And we timed this. Mm -hmm. Let's reconstruct the actual crime. As well as we can reconstruct it. I think a murderer could use up 30 or 40 seconds pretty easily at that point. So let's reconstruct the killer. Yeah, let's. Mm -hmm. Here. You do the stab. No, no. <laughs> I'll do it. And why aren't you the one, uh, the one getting stabbed? Uh, you're younger than I am. <laughs> right, don't forget to take one second to fall. Right. And remember, the old man was found on his side, on his right side. Okay. So when you fall, yeah. roll over onto your right side. Now, if someone is angry enough to kill someone, don't you think that they would take a second or two to look at their victim? Now, divorce yourself from this particular case. Just human nature. That seems reasonable. Hey, wait a minute. He falls and lands on his right side, the father did. Yeah. But stabbing someone isn't like shooting them, even when it's right in the heart. Uh, the father would have worked around for a few seconds, <laughs> lying there on the floor, writhing me. That's quite possible. 
He, would have, he might have had enough oxygen in his system for two or three seconds, I should think. But wouldn't the father have cried out? Oh, maybe the kid held his mouth. That also seems possible. There's another point I might bring out. Anyone who is mentally capable enough to murder someone and wipe away the fingerprints is also mentally capable enough to look around the apartment, or the room in this case, to see if there were any other clues. It would only take a second or two, I should think, but he would look around. This gets better and better. We are trying to make this clear. One does not talk about quality when murder is involved. About, Let's do this. About this with the fingerprints. The kid wiped the fingerprints off of the knife. What about the doorknob? I mean, if a man was coming into my home and he was wiping the doorknob off with a handkerchief as he came in, <laughs> this would give me an uneasy feeling. <laughs> so the doorknob must have been wiped off after the killing. And this too would take some time. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Now, if you timed the last one, why don't you time this one too? Okay. Just stamp your foot when you want me to begin.
this murder, it, it took place in that tenement time. Remember how we stumbled on the steps. That's right. Mm. And the policemen there, they had the big light bulbs and one even had a very bright flashlight. Remember? Mm -hmm. An old man who misjudged the time by uh, 20 seconds. On this we all agree. This old man looked down the dark hallway of a tenement and recognized a running figure. He was 100% wrong about the time. It took more than twice as long as he thought it did. Then could not the old man be 100% wrong about who he saw? That's the most idiotic thing I ever heard. You made that up out of thin air. We're a hung jury. Let's just be honest about it. Do you three feel there is no room for reasonable doubt? Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but perhaps you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. I don't understand it. Who are you to talk to me like that? Get a load of this guy. He comes over here running for his life, and before he can take a big breath, he's trying to tell us how to run the whole show. It's the arrogance No of one it. is asking anyone where they came from. I was born right here. Or where their father came from. Maybe it would have hurt us to take a few lessons from people who come running here. <laughs> Maybe they've learned something that we don't know. We're not so perfect. Oh, please. Uh, I'm used to this. It's all right. Uh, thank no, you. No, no, it's not all right. All right, right all right. I apologize. Is that what you want? Yes, that's what I want. All right, all right, all right. Let's stop arguing. Who's got something constructive to say? Well, there is something that's been bothering me a little bit. It's this whole business about the knife woman and how it was made. The downward angle of it, you know? Don't tell me we're going to start that. They went over it and over it in court. Well, I know they did. But this kid is five feet eight inches tall. His father is six feet two inches tall. That's a difference of, what, six inches? It just seems awfully awkward to be stabbing down in the chest of a man that's a half a foot taller than you are. You're not going to be satisfied till you see it again. I I'm going to give you a demonstration. Okay. 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 Now watch this. I don't want to have to do it again. Is this six inches? It's more than six inches. Okay, let it be more. Hey. <laughs>
then the kid could not have made the kind of wound that killed his father. I suppose it's conceivable that he could have made a wound like that, but it's not likely. Not if he had any experience with switchblades. And we all know that he had plenty of experience with switchblades. I don't believe it. Right. Neither do I. You're feeding us a lot of mumbo jumbo. So what do you think? Well, I don't know. How about you? I'll tell you what I think. I'm getting pretty tired of this whole thing already. Now we are getting nowhere fast. I say, let's break it up and go home. Before we decide anything more, I want to try to pull all this together. This should be good. He has a right. Let him go ahead. Well, I'm in advertising, and I'm used to the big guns pulling the <laughs> So uh, let's chip up a few and see if any of them land on the green. Look, I want you all to look at this logically and consistently. We have guilty. I want to know, is the kid smart or is he dumb? What do you mean? This is a kid who's gone to reform school for knife fighting. And the night of the murder, he bought a knife, a switch knife. And it would take a pretty stupid kid to go and murder a man, his father, with an instrument that everyone would associate with the kid. I quite agree. Yeah. He's dumb. However, if he were dumb, then why did he make the kind of wound that an inexperienced man would make with a knife? I'm not sure I understand. To murder someone must take great emotion, a great hatred. And at that moment, he's going to handle the knife as best as he knows how. A trained knife fighter is going to handle it as he's been trained, underhand. Someone who hasn't been trained is going to go overhand. But the kid is being very smart. Everyone knows that he's an experienced knife fighter. So at that moment, he's smart enough to make the kind of wound that an amateur would make. That man is a smart man. Smart enough even to wipe the fingerprints away. Perhaps even smart enough to wait until an L train is going by to cover the noise. Now, is the kid smart or is he dumb? Hey, now, wait a minute. Well, listen. The woman across the L track saw the murder through the L train. So, it stands to reason that somebody on that train saw the actual murder too. Well, it, it's a possibility, but no one did that we know of. It would take an awfully dumb man to take a chance on murdering a man that the train was going by. A dumb man. A very stupid man. A man swept by emotion. He probably heard nothing. He probably didn't even hear the train coming. And whoever did murder the father did it as well as he could. So, this kid is dumb enough to do everything to associate himself with a switch knife, a switch knife murder. And a moment later, he becomes smart. The kid is smart enough to make the kind of move that would lead us to suspect someone else. Yet at the same instant, he's dumb enough to do the killing while an L train is going by. And a moment later, he's smart enough to wipe the wound, the, the, the fingerprints away? To make this kid dumb, you have to say he's, he's a, for him to be guilty, he has to be dumb from 8 o'clock until about midnight. And then from midnight, he becomes what, smart one second, dumb for a few seconds, smart again. And once again, he becomes stupid. So stupid that he doesn't even think of a good alibi. Now, is that kid smart or is he dumb? To make this boy guilty, you have to toss his intelligence like a pancake. Look, I say there's doubt, doubt, doubt. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. And the old man downstairs. <laughs> On the stand, he swore that it was 15 seconds. He insisted it was only 15 seconds. We all know it was about 40 seconds. The old no man lie half the time and tell the truth to his mother. For this kid to be guilty, he has to be stupid, then smart, then stupid, then smart. For this kid to be guilty, the old man downstairs has to be a liar half the time, and the other half the time, he has to tell the truth. You can reasonably doubt. I'm sold on uh, reasonable doubt. Now, I, I believe I am too. I, I, I wanted to hear more, but I, I think I've heard enough. 
I got another vote. Another vote has been called for. I guess the quickest way is by a show of hands. Anyone object? No. no. All right. All those voting not guilty, raise your hand. Nine. All those voting guilty? Three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. I don't understand you people. How can you believe this kid is innocent? Look, you know how those people lie. I don't have to tell you. They don't know what the truth is. And let me tell you, it don't take any big special reason for them to kill somebody either. They get drunk and bang, somebody's lying in the gutter. <laughs> uh, nobody's blaming them. But that's how they are. You know what I mean? Violence. Human nature don't mean so much to them as it does to us. Hey, where are you all going? Look, these people are drinking and fighting, and if somebody gets killed, so somebody gets killed, they don't care. Uh, sure, I mean, th th there's a few good things about them too. I'm the first to say that. They're, they're, I've known a few who are decent people. But that's the exception. The majority of them, it's like they have no feelings. They can do anything. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm speaking my peace. Hey, listen to me. Look, they're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. And we better watch out. Take it from me. This kid on trial? What? Don't you know about him? What are you doing? Hey, listen. I'm trying to tell you something. I've had enough. If I hear one more word out of you, I'm going to split your skull. I'm, I'm just trying to... All right. Tell you. Sit down. All right, everybody. Sit down. I still believe that the boy is guilty of murder, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> the most damning piece of evidence was made by the old li by the lady who lives across the street who claimed she saw the killing. That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony. All right, let's go over her testimony. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recount it accurately. She said she went to bed about 11 o'clock that night. Now her bed is next to the open window, and when she lies down, she can see through the window into the window of the other apartment. She tossed and turned, couldn't get to sleep. For about an hour she was like that. And then she looks out the window at about 12.10 and sees the boy stab his father. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. What do you think? Well, there's just so much evidence. What are you talking about? He's absolutely right. You can throw out all the other evidence. That was my feeling. Now, I don't deny the validity of all the points this man has made. Let's say that on one track there is doubt. But what can you say about the woman's story? She saw it! What time is it? Um, three minutes of six. You don't think they let us go home and finish this tomorrow day? I got a kid with mom. Not a chance. Can't you see the clock without your glasses? 
Not clearly, no. Glasses are a nuisance, aren't they? Then what do you guys do at night when you're in bed and you want to know what time it is? I put my glasses on and I look at the clock. <laughs> I just lie in bed and listen for the chimes. It's a clock my father gave me and my wife when we got married. It took us 10 years to find a place to put it. <laughs> then you don't wear your glasses to bed. <laughs> no, no one wears black glasses to bed. The woman who testified that she saw the killing, she wears glasses. What about her? Did she wear glasses? Of course! The woman wore bifocals! I remember it very clearly. They looked quite strong. That's funny. I never noticed that. I never noticed that. Why didn't I notice that? I think it's logical to say that she was not wearing her glasses to bed. And she didn't put them on to just casually glance out the window. She testified that the Murder took place the instant she looked out the window, and the lights went out a split second later. She would not have had time to put her glasses on. No, she may have honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know what she saw? Maybe she's farsighted. How does he know all these things? Is there anyone here who still does not think there's a reasonable doubt? I, I will always wonder that there is a reasonable doubt. I think he's guilty. Anybody else? No. No, I'm convinced. There is a reasonable doubt. That's 11 votes not guilty. <laughs> One guilty. Uh -huh. You're alone. Well, I don't care if I am alone. I have a right. Yes, you have a right. Well, I told you. I think he's guilty. What more do you want? Your arguments. I gave you my arguments. Well, we're not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. Listen. I mean, what's the matter with you? I mean, you're the guy. You made all the arguments. Don't turn now. A guilty man is going to be walking the streets. A murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I, uh, there's a reasonable doubt. I'm, I'm not wrong very often, but perhaps this time I was. There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. You're not going to intimidate me. I'm entitled to my opinion. It's going to be a hung jury. That's it. And there's nothing that we can do about that. But hope that maybe, maybe in a few months, you might be able to get some sleep. You are all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. If there is another trial, then some of us We'll point these things out to the various lawyers. Guilty. 
not guilt.